Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today I got a review on a new camera. This is from Urive, which is a South Korean company. They haven't formally released any of their cameras in the US yet, or up until now. And this is actually the fourth iteration of this model, the Albatross 4. So I was pretty curious to check this out because, like many other Korean cameras, it does have a parking mode by motion detection and it also has full HD full HD so this is a two-channel camera one thing you'll notice right away is the very flashy box now the camera does have multiple tones a silver a gray and black so here you can see some of the features of it in addition to low voltage and high heat cutoff it actually has an alert for when it records an event while in parking mode so it'll actually flash a red light if your car is hit or something like that while your car is parked like say at a mall parking lot or something so that's pretty cool because as soon as you walk to your car you're gonna see if there was an event so you can see here like I said the camera is multiple tones it's very flashy rear camera is just all black though came with a 32 gigabyte memory card here we got a GPS so it's external GPS so you don't have to use it if you don't want comes only with a hard wiring kit so you can't connect this to the cigarette or cigar 12 volt socket here's the micro USB cable for the rear camera does have a 90 degree on one end here's some extra adhesives and the allen wrench to adjust the mount here's just a micro SD card reader Let's take a closer look at the camera now so if you're not a fan of very flashy or visible cameras this isn't gonna be for you so like I said this came from South Korea where they actually like really visible cameras here you can see all the inputs for power, the GPS, and rear camera. Got a 4 inch LCD touch screen. And this is a, uh, it's not a capacitive touch screen. You do have to put pressure on it, sort of like the old style touch screens. So there's no multi touch or anything like that. On the side we got a power switch and a micro SD card slot and I actually do like that there's just a simple power switch on the actual unit that way if you don't want to use the parking mode while your car is off you can just turn it off in the past I've unplugged cameras when I didn't want to drain my car battery and that's sort of inconvenient to me so this would work very well with a cell link battery B version 2 so pretty standard rear camera 1080p like I mentioned before you can actually mirror the video with this switch back here which is pretty cool because then you could actually use the rear view almost like a backup camera depending on how you have it mounted overall solid construction this mount style is very similar to a few previous cameras I have tried and not too big of a fan of this you would think the clear would be a good thing but I'd rather have all black actually I think black is harder to see through the window where this makes it very eye-catching I've also used cameras with mounts that require Allen wrenches which I'm not a fan of either but you will just need to do this once and then it should be good to go once you pop it in looks pretty fancy actually looks high quality just judging by the appearance of the camera now in comparison to another recent camera I reviewed also a full HD two-channel camera the Thinkware F770 you can see they have a very different style the Thinkware is all black and designed discreet where the Albatross 4 looks like an actual camera in your window think where it just mounts to your windshield and is very stealthy so very different styles now I did want to point out that 
with the hardwiring kit, you do have to connect the yellow to an ACC fuse, red to a battery fuse, and black to a ground. If you were to use this with the Cell Link Battery B version 2, the yellow and red actually are switched on the Cell Link, which is sort of confusing, but you can check that out on blackboxmycar.com. So here's what it looks like installed in my window. So between the blue power lights, it will flash red if there's an event. There you can see a Blackview camera, the Thinkware, and the Street Guardian. So all those other three I have are very stealthy as opposed to this one, which is obviously very visible. Now, I'm going to apologize for how shaky this camera is, but I was only able to record the menu while in my car since I could only hardwire it to turn it on. So there you can see right when it starts, you got a picture in picture. You can switch between front and rear. Now the one thing I really don't like about this menu is anytime you go into any menu it has to stop recording Then here you can see there's a couple different features like what type of car you have. Then we got lane departure warning, frontal collision warning, and also a front vehicle start warning that alerts you if the vehicle stopped in front of you starts moving so if you're not paying attention it'll alert you. But now here when I go back to the main menu it starts recording and it takes a few seconds so that's sort of irritating and you can see I have to tap the screen a few times because since it's not a capacitive touch screen I actually have to put force on it. Then each time I select a different menu item it has to stop recording, I can change my settings, and then start recording before I can go to the next menu. That's probably my least favorite thing about this camera. There's a lot of good things about this camera, but I would say by far the way the menu system is set up is just tedious and luckily you're only gonna likely have to go through this once when you install the camera, but it's still annoying nonetheless. Now another thing I'm not a fan of is on the parking mode settings. You can see you can set the cutoff voltage and the cutoff time, but you can't use both. So if you want to do a 12 hour cutoff time, you might drain your battery if your battery is really low, so that's sort of a flaw to me. I think you should be able to use both at the same time. So here you can see there's quite a lot of standard settings too. Here you can actually adjust the touch screen or calibrate the touch screen. The night vision is just how bright it is. I had it all the way down at f for a while just because license plates were a little too hard to read at night. My headlights were just reflecting so much off the license plates in front of me that I couldn't re really read the numbers, so that's why I had turned it down at first. So overall, like I said, you know, the menu has a lot of different features because this camera has quite a bit of features, but the way they set up that menu, not a fan of. So I could I hope they could update this in the future with some new firmware. Now, I wasn't able to capture the actual software that this camera comes with and is actually required. Um it's a little strange because the video files actually are saved as one file. So when you look on the memory card on Windows Explorer or the File Explorer, it'll show just the front video files and it doesn't even show them all. It's very strange. They used a very weird codec. I'm not totally sure about how it works, but basically you need this software to split the video into two separate files if you want to. and. It's a little strange, but apparently it's because they get a lot more compression for decent video quality. When I checked the file, it said it was only like 2 megabits per second, which is inaccurate. It's not the first camera I've had either that displayed the incorrect bitrate on Windows. The true bitrate should be 8 megabits front and 8 megabits rear. So at least that's according to you arrive and some of the specs they showed me and they actually showed some screenshots using their software to find the true bitrate. And judging by this video you can see that while the video is not the most amazing out there it's pretty much 
up to par with a lot of other full HD, full HD, two-channel camera systems. So the fact that this has full HD in the back and actually decent video in the rear, it's definitely uh, an advantage over Blackview cameras because right now the Blackview DR750 has full HD, full HD, but the video quality is not that great and it seems like the 650 is a better option still. For this camera, you're getting full HD in the rear unlike 720p for the DR650 from Blackview and I'd say the video quality of the front and the rear camera on this compared to the front of the Blackview is at least as good. It's really hard to say with all these different conditions. If I recall correctly, Blackview did bump their two-channel 650 to 10 megabits per second, but I think the difference is pretty negligible, at least during the day. I feel like at night, this camera might not actually perform as well in terms of detail. I'd say the brightness is pretty adequate. Even in dark areas, my headlights seem to light up the road quite a lot in front of my car, but then the video still looks pretty grainy. My first impression was that other two-channel systems that I've tried had a little more detail in their night video quality, but like I said, it's really hard to compare because a lot of times they're very similar. But I would say overall, the brightness of this camera at night is one of the pros of it. So here you can see, uh, this is one of the roads I like to test at night because there's no street lights at all. And like I said, it lights up the road very well. So that's this is why I think the brightness at night is actually pretty good. And this is actually with the brightness all the way down. When comparing clips with the uh, night vision or the brightness all the way up on the camera, I did start to notice that there were little details I could make out better, like I could see a little bit further out of my headlight range, make out some of the curbs on the left side, or make out some of the trees in the background of the dark sky, where I wasn't able to do that with the brightness all the way down. But the reason I originally put it all the way down was because cars right in front of me were reflecting so much on their license plate I couldn't read a car's license plate right in front of me. So I found somewhere in the middle ground is best for me personally. And of course the rear, you're not going to get anything without any street lights behind you. Now the parking mode is one of the good features of this camera that I really like. There you can see that Jeep just flew by and this does have buffered parking mode which is a very awesome feature, one of my favorite features of any cameras. So here you can see the clip started three seconds before that SUV came into view. So that was the motion sensing. Since it's always buffering that three seconds internally, as soon as it senses motion or an impact, it can quickly save that last three seconds onto your memory card plus an additional 20 or so seconds. And that way you won't miss anything like a quick hit and run or someone walking by keying your car. So I think the buffered parking mode is probably one of the best features of this camera. Most high-end Korean dash cameras, even some of the cheaper ones, have buffered parking mode and I think that's pretty much a necessary feature in my opinion if you're going to have a parking mode because if it's not buffered someone could hit your car and suddenly drive off and your camera might not even capture their plate because it wasn't a buffered parking mode. So besides that I really love the full HD in the back and the fact that you can mirror the rear camera with a switch is really awesome. I also really like that the Hardwiring is all built in, so you don't have to have a separate box like the Power Magic Pro or Vico Power Plus. You just hardwire it right into your fuse box. There's no big box in between that you have to hide somewhere in your car. That's a really great feature. And overall, this camera is pretty decent, but there are some things that I really didn't like. I didn't like how flashy this camera is. I hope you arrive if they really want to be successful in America, start releasing more discreet 
uh, stealthy cameras, sort of like what Thinkware has done with their newest camera, which seems to target the American market. I really didn't like how the menu had to stop and start the recording in between each submenu. And another thing that I thought was a big issue is the fact that you can't use the voltage cutoff and timer at the same time. I think it's just sort of weird that they wouldn't let you use both. So overall I'd say the camera, the pros outweigh the cons. I think other options are available that are better, but this one is actually cheaper than most other options. When the Blackview 650 came out, I paid $420 for that, and that didn't have the PowerMagic Pro, so I couldn't hardwire it, and it only came with a 16 gigabyte memory card. Where this, out, out of the box, you can hardwire, comes with a 32 gigabyte card. It's really fully complete when you get it. You don't have to worry about anything else. And on top of that, at least the day quality is pretty adequate, very good for a full HD, full HD camera, where the Blackview's best camera still has 720p in the back, and I'd say maybe some people would want to purchase this. It's $350 compared to $400 or more for some other two-channel systems, so I think it's really up to you. If you don't mind the very flashy design, then I think it's a good option. I think if you want something stealthier, you're going to have to pay more, but there's definitely other options that are even cheaper with pros and cons, but I'll leave it at that. This was sent to me for review by Urive, so I'd like to thank them for that. As usual, you can check down below if you're interested in this product on a link to Amazon, which helps support my channel. As usual, drive safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.